is everybody? Why did everyone leave? Hello? Hello? Can anyone hear me? It's summertime. What better way to kick back and relax than to win some crypto? All you got to do is be a subscriber and like and comment on all of our videos during the months of July and August for your maximum number of entries. We'll have 17 winners and it's decentralized. So you get to pick the crypto, any coin that you want if you are a winner. So make sure you subscribe and get your chance to enter today. BitSquad, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a huge video for you guys talking about a story that has really taken me by surprise and I think could have huge implications in crypto and the way that Americans do business with cryptocurrency. Uh, we're also going to be taking a look at the Miami Dolphins partnering with Litecoin and also Canada loosening up on some regulations despite the Quadriga scandal. we got a lot of news to get to, but let's go ahead right now, jump into the markets. Market Watch you know that old adage, what goes up must come down? <laughs> That's the way it seems uh, the market has been doing lately. It's like every time we start moving forward, eh, we just drop back down. So overall, we're making gains. We're moving up over the long time, long uh, term here. But, you know, day like today kind of sucked. You know, we definitely hit a, a big drop over the last 24 hours. Altcoins are getting absolutely murdered right now, but Bitcoin's not doing so hot itself. Uh, down 5% at $11,398. Uh, market cap's at $312 billion, so we lost about $30 billion in the market over the last couple of days. Bitcoin dominance is up over 65% now. Uh, Bizon, there it is, making an appearance. I did a review on Bizon a while back. I think it's a good project. Uh, XMAX, Japan Content Network, Crypto.com Chain, and Quant. Is that... Um I'm sorry, it's Japan Content Token. It's not Japan Content Network. Uh, biggest losers of the day. Uh, we have Tezos, Dent, uh, Quantum, IOST, and VeChain. Yeah, IOST is definitely taking a big uh, dump today, but I mean, you look, there's blood everywhere. We have plenty of double digit losses today. Um, hopefully, Bitcoin will be able to recover, and then some of the alts can recover, at least in their US dollar value soon. It's time for the fresh five top news stories of the day, starting with number five. Okay, so first story isn't necessarily crypto related, but it's certainly crypto Twitter related. Uh, Twitter was down today. Reddit was also down on the desktop version. We've been seeing a lot of outages across social media platforms. Ironically, the same time that Twitter was down, there was a social media summit being held at the White House today at three o'clock. So it was like the exact same time they're having the social media summit and Twitter's down. So I don't know about the optics. I don't know about the coincidence. Um, maybe it wasn't a coincidence. A lot of people, you know, think there might be more to the story. I'm just not really sure. But uh, one thing's for sure, it was down a lot today. Um, for several hours, um, it, later on in the afternoon, it was reported that there were some more outages. Uh, if you look at the hotspots, uh, United States, East Coast, Europe, um, and also part of South America. And I heard Australia, but I, I don't see it on that map there. Um, but the long and the short of it is, Twitter said that there was an internal, uh, you know, uh, mechanism that had gotten, you know, off kilter or whatever. They had to fix it. I don't ever believe them when they say what it was. Who, who knows what it could have been? Maybe they were trying to protect themselves from an attack or, or who knows, um, a hack or something like that. But, um, you know, centralization, right? We've got these centralized systems and we are a long ways off from having decentralized networks that can, you know, have 100% uptime and that will never be attacked and will be flawless but they will come. That will happen in the future. Um, maybe 50 years, maybe 100 years. You guys gotta remember how new the internet still is. But uh, you know, definitely it's something to keep an eye on because you know, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube have all suffered outages this year. Um, a lot of other platforms as well. And I hope this isn't a trend where we're gonna see more and more of that happening. Number four. So we got this story out of Zimbabwe. If you, you didn't know, Zimbabwe has came out of a terrible inflationary crisis um, over the last decade. And they actually have been using US dollars, uh, British pounds, other currencies to be able to settle their local transactions. And what that was doing is making their currency basically worthless. You can, it's funny, listen or reading this story, it reminded me of 
the Bitcoin futures that were launched in 2017, they were not settled in Bitcoin. They were settled in US dollars. And then what happened to Bitcoin? The price tanked. So by settling, uh, you know, in the local dollar for Zimbabwe, that's going to add value to their currency and hopefully can kind of get them off of this financial crisis. Um, but one thing that is spurred off of this is that Bitcoin is becoming very, very popular again. Um, not necessarily the government has banned it there. They say that you can't use it. But localbitcoins.com, peer-to-peer Bitcoin transactions are surging in Zimbabwe, and that's certainly good news. Number three. All right, guys, Litecoin is now going to be partnering with the Miami Dolphins of the National Football League, also known as American football, or as I like to call it, real football. Uh, but anyways, guys, Hard Rock Stadium is where the Dolphins play in Miami, and you will actually be able to buy raffle tickets out of all things with Litecoin and also with Bitcoin. So if you don't know what a 50-50 raffle is, a lot of sporting events do it. They take a raffle, uh, you know, you pay a couple bucks, get a ticket. And at the end of the night, they add all the money together from the tickets. 50% goes to a charity and 50% goes to the raffle winner. Um, so that's going to be something you're going to be able to do at Hard Rock Stadium, I believe this season. But it's just very interesting to have uh, you know, we're starting to see a lot of NFL players, uh, Ros uh, Russell Okung, I think it's Okung or Okung, not sure how to pronounce it, um, but he has gotten into crypto full force. I believe Matt Barkley uh, also is in crypto. I know Richard Sherman is in crypto. A lot of people in the NFL, a lot of players in the NFL are into crypto. So definitely a space to keep your eye on. Uh, I always thought it's going to be fascinating when we finally see uh, you know, top tier or sports figures and celebrities talking about crypto, not because they're paid to, but because they're genuinely interested. So, you know, this will give a lot of fans opportunities to see advertisements for Litecoin in the stadium as well. So this is great exposure for Litecoin. Number two. So Canada is actually loosening up some of its crypto regulations, which is interesting due to the fact that Quadriga was a huge scandal just occurring in crypto in Canada and has probably been going on for about three years in all reality. So what does this change? Well, basically, they're going to be changing the amount that exchanges have to report uh, to the Canadian government. So it used to be uh, a, a much smaller amount. Now it's got to be over $10,000 in Canadian dollars, which is less value than American dollars and also not as free as us because nobody's as free as America. Uh, but anyways, guys, um, I, I thought this was interesting because this is from Live Bitcoin News and this is a really negative sounding article. Uh, the new legislation could ultimately w work for or against Canada. The downside is there are now fewer regulations, which means that illicit crypto activity could become an even bigger norm within Canada's borders. That sounds like all the people that are trying to FUD Bitcoin. And here we have a Bitcoin news website that seems to be doing the same thing. So I thought that was pretty interesting, but we'll just have to see what happens to my neighbor up north. Hold up. It's time for an IOST break. All right, guys, we got IOST news. I got two stories uh, involving IOST to try to cheer you up from the dip that IOST is on. I'm still not worried. You know, a lot of people have been asking me about, you know, what I feel about the marketing of IOST. What do I feel about the project? What What is it not doing right um, in terms of being able to get, uh, you know, more people excited about it? It's got these awesome staking rewards, all kinds of stuff that's great about the project, super decentralized. Um, they have me as a content creator. Uh, that's got to be the best thing about the project, right, guys? But in reality, you know, I'm not that concerned about the price, guys. I believe the price is going to come to the top. I mean, I believe the price is going to go up when it's time for it to go up. I'm more concerned about the awareness. It doesn't seem like when I go to crypto conference that a lot of people, you know, know about this project. And I don't know what we got to do to get that fixed, but I know I'm trying to do my part. Um, and I know everybody that's involved in IOSD is definitely trying to do their part to, uh, you know, just make people more aware of what is going on with this project. But recently, uh, IOSD has teamed up with Big Four. Big Four is a wallet. Um, you can check it out right here. Uh, it is going to basically be working with a lot of DAP projects. It already works with ETH and EOS, and now it's adding IOST. So that is great news. Um, speaking of exposure, there's some right there. Also, more excitement about exposure about IOST. Uh, Upbit is actually having a trading competition where they're going to be giving away 5 million IOST, uh, you know, for the people with the most volume. So you can see, uh, you know, basically the first round of the event is the 11th to the 12th. Second round is 13th to the 14th. Uh, the target market is Upbit, IOST, and the KRW market I don't, does that stand for Korea? I think that stands for Korea. Not 100% sure about that. But anyways, guys, that is going on. So if you want to check out that trading competition, you can definitely go do that and try to win some sweet IOST prizes. Well, at least win some sweet IOST. 
the number one crypto story of the day. All right, well, we've got some really big news today in the world of cryptocurrency, and it just keeps going. Uh, recently, brand new, fresh to the news desk, uh, we learned that Donald Trump just tweeted about Bitcoin. So we'll uh, talk about that in a second. But I want to bring this up because this is great news for cryptocurrency, in my opinion. Blockstack is planning one of the first Reg A plus compliant token offerings in the U.S. I recently interviewed Blockstack with, uh, you know, with uh, J Chains for Beards and Bitcoins while we were in San Francisco. But this is a, a decent project. But what they're doing in terms of the actual uh, token sale here is revolutionary, and I believe that this is going to provide a roadmap for future projects that want to launch tokens in the United States and get U.S. investors and do it all compliantly. So uh, basically what they're gonna be doing is doing a token sale, it's going on right now. You can actually go to stackstoken.com, not financial advice, this isn't a sponsored video. I really believe this is absolutely huge news, guys. Um, you can go here and you can register. If you click register here, you can actually buy the token. Um, I, I don't know how long it's gonna be. I don't know if it's gonna sell out. You can read the white paper on the website. You can read the sales deck, the off, uh, offering circular, uh, circular about the token, stacks, STX, but to me, this is not the story. The block stack is not the story today. The story is we now have a framework for getting crypto projects funding through token sales compliantly with the United States government. And to me, that is absolutely groundbreaking when it comes to crypto. And now if you can think about this, you know, ICOs drove a lot of the 2017 market because people wanted to get in on something very early because they missed out on Bitcoin. Well, through something like this, US customers, without having to use a VPN or do something sketchy, are gonna be able to do that. So if we see more of these in the future, which I believe that we will, they won't be as frequent probably as, as obviously there won't be as many as there are ICOs because the regulation is very tough to get through. But once again, now any company that wants to do this can follow the same roadmap that Blockstack did to get this approved. Now, one other aspect about this is social, uh, security token offerings, right? Everybody's been talking about STOs for you know two years now, saying it's the next big thing. And I've said, I don't think it is because yes, it'll be great to have everything tokenized, but you or me that are not an accredited investor, we can't even invest in those. But this Reg A plus, uh, you know, level, uh, I don't know what you call it, level certification, whatever you want to call it, um, that uh, they're going to be getting for this token sale, that is going to be open to any investor in the United States. You don't have to be accredited. So this is, once again, like I said, I don't know if you guys have heard me beat this drum a few times. This is really big news, and this could change the market for the future in crypto in the United States. Now, just recently, uh, we had Donald Trump tweeting, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, which are not money and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate unlawful behavior, including drug trade and other illegal activity. They sound like that Bitcoin news website we just looked at. Uh, and he goes on to say some more stuff about cryptocurrency and LibraCoin. This whole thing is about slowing down Facebook. That's what this is. These are not the words from Donald Trump. Yes, I know Donald Trump flies off the handle on Twitter, but these this was a prepared tweet. You, you can tell this is something that the Congress and the Senate is pushing him to do to make a statement because they're coming out hard right now against cryptocurrency. But it's interesting, the SEC, we, we saw you know kind of some give with this token sale that Blockstack is going to be doing, and now we see the pressure on the other side. Um, so it's kind of just, you know, just like America, we got checks and balances, right? So, um, you know, I certainly wish this wouldn't have been the first tweet Donald Trump would have made about Bitcoin, but the president of the United States can't come out and say anything against the dollar, right? Uh, here it is, he, a little raw, raw thing at the end, um, where he basically says the US dollar is the most powerful currency in the world, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, I mean, it is, it is. We have to admit it, right? Like, even though the, the value of it has gone down, it's the currency the world looks to. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of places, like, they accept dollars. Um, even if it's not their currency, we just looked at Zimbabwe settling in U.S. dollars. It's a powerful currency. However, it devalues over time and will always continue to devalue because we just print more and more of it. So at some point, the rubber is going to hit the road. Um, but, you know, certainly wouldn't expect a president to say anything different. He can't really come out against the, the currency of the country that he represents. Are these his personal feelings? Eh, I don't think so. Whoa, hold on, guys. This just in, breaking. Democrats have announced they love Bitcoin now. <laughs> if Donald Trump doesn't like it, Democrats now love it. 
Uh, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll see a turn there. Pro probably not. Uh, it seems like the Congress and Senate is in a united front right now. And it's really not about Bitcoin, I don't think. I think it's really more about Facebook. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. A lot of big news going on today. Definitely some interesting stories. Drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Blockstack token sale through the SEC with the Reg A um, you know, listing and things like that. Are you interested in it? I'm probably going to buy some, to be honest with you. Um, I, I don't know how much yet. I got to scan my passport to be able to buy some. Uh, that's one thing you do have to do. There is some KYC involved. But, you know, I'm definitely very interested in it. And I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on this project for sure because... Honestly, not financial advice. I think it's going to moon. If it's going to be the first one, we've seen how well the IEOs have done. I think it's probably going to do pretty well. It could be, you know, a, a, a good way to get some gains. Once again, I'm just telling you my own opinion on what I'm thinking for this market. All right, guys, that's all I got. BitBoy out.